The most important exercise for the health of pelvic floor dysfunction is the subject of this video, so stay tuned. Hey, this is Dr. Shaki from Core Pelvic Floor Therapy right here in Irvine, Orange County. When it comes to pelvic floor dysfunction, it's important for the pelvis to be stable for the muscles to be balanced. When it comes to pelvic floor dysfunction, there is an instability of the pelvis and the weakness or tightness of the pelvic floor itself. The posture is compromised, the breathing is compromised. There's a lot of different things that go in the picture that you may or may not pay attention to. When it comes to the integrity of the lower extremities at the hip joints, the stability of the pelvis itself and the positioning of the spine, which is, the, they're all attachments to the pelvis, the house that pelvic floor is the floor of. My go-to exercise is squatting. The issue here is a lot of times people don't have what it takes to be able to squat correctly. And then you watch the videos and they show you squatting down on, an, on a yoga block and you just sit down duplicate it. But you see, if I sit on the, can you see this? Mm -hmm. If I see, sit on this block and I'm sitting like this, that's not going to cut it. The reason is because I'm slouched over. I'm not in an ideal position. Just because I'm sitting on something close to the ground and my legs are bent does not make it proper. So you want to picture, and yes, you don't know what balance is yet, but this is working on what it takes to do the exercise correctly. That has to do with proprioception, the knowledge of what body part is in space at any given time. So when you're sitting on the block, your legs are spread, and you need to make yourself comfortable. So if you have knee issues, don't bend your knees as much. However, your torso needs to be upright and you don't make it upright by sticking your chest out. That's fake. What it takes to keep you upright has to do with the base engaging. So your lower ab and your lower back working together to straighten and elongate your spine. So you're sitting there with your neck gliding back. Why? Because if it's forward, over time it's gonna exhaust the body and then it encourages this movement. So you're gonna be upright with your neck in an upright position in the continuation of your spine. You're not using your hands or your arms to try to hold on into an upright position. You've got to activate these things and then you sit in that position and once you're able to bring your feet closer then you can hinge forward and backward then you can get your feet closer even more and hinge backward and forward a lot of times people are afraid to let their knees go beyond their toes the reason for that is because we don't know how well your knee structure is. So it's a safe thing to say, but unless you're, you're strengthening that, that portion of the knees, you're never going to have good knees. So in this position, this is assuming you are safe to do so. I don't know if you are or not, but I'm showing you different versions. I'm not going to be slouching forward to get my butt off the block. I'm going to be hinging forward with the same neutral spine and let my legs lift me up and bring it back and hinge back. This does not happen overnight, but that's the goal. And you don't compromise your positions to look like what I'm doing. That just means you don't own it. So there are preliminary exercises to it. A version of this is with you laying down on your back. So I'm going to get rid of the block and I'm going to lay down on my back only you need to make sure that your spine is nice and neutral, meaning every part of your spine is touching the, t the floor 
and you're bringing this up, you can grab the outside of your feet and elbows in. With your elbows, you push the legs out and bring the feet closer to you. That's a good conditioning of your inner thigh. You need to, for this exercise, you need to make sure that your spine is neutral and touching the ground. Just as in a seated position, I just demonstrated, your spine was upright, not because you were sticking your chest out, but because you were positioning your spine in the right place. It's very easy to duplicate exercises incorrectly. And that's the problem that I have with, with our society. Don't duplicate something without really understanding what the requirements are. The only way you own the position is when you understand, you listen to the limitations your body has, work through it, not push through it, but work through it to move to the next step. Sometimes it's very small incremental progress, but that's how it's done right. Hope this helps.